Boom. Hello and welcome to the Protector Nation podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to making the world a better place, making the world a safer place by making good people dangerous. In this podcast, we're going to study and understand what it takes to protect, to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, because we all know that you have a few basic needs, food, water, and shelter, but you also have the need to protect those things in a world and society where evil runs rampant and is sometimes left unchecked. Learning how to protect yourselves and your loved ones is becoming more and more important. And so we strive to raise the level of accountability to those who would do evil on this planet by making sure that the sheep, that the flock, is more well versed in protecting themselves and their loved ones. If that sounds interesting to you, then sit back and enjoy the show out. Boom, what's going on you guys? Real quick, the Protector Symposium 4.0 is coming up. This episode is amazing. It's an amazing opportunity to talk about some of the things we will be training at the Protector Symposium 4.0. Entangled combatives, entangled combatives. That's what James is doing in this video. And I just wanna let you guys know, we will be in Florida October 1st through the 3rd studying just that with one of the best, the best, in my opinion, instructor in the world when it comes to entangled combatives with regards to knife fighting and gun uh, employment, you know, your CCW employment in that area. So go to protectorsymposium.com and get your ticket while tickets last. We will be hands-on, inside cars, human pressure, learning how to actually draw your gun and implement it in the exact same type of situation, close to the same, the same type of situation that James is in in this scenario. So don't hesitate. Get to some protectorsymposium.com and get your tickets now. Uh, another thing you guys can take advantage of is our free training manual. We have a free training manual put together by all of the instructors we've had at the Protector Symposiums. This is your chance to get at a tremendous discount. Uh, uh, on, on, on the protector symposiums, but first and foremost, to also get um, the free training guide we put together based on the things we've learned from some of the best in the world uh, with regards to personal protection. So no matter what your background, law enforcement, professional protectors, uh, civilians, go protectornation.com and get that free training manual now. But hopefully we can see you guys at the Protector Symposium and we can all train together uh, and you guys can get a digital ticket or an in-person ticket. That's protectorsymposium.com. All of it can be found at my website, Byron Rogers, R-O-D-G, rogers.com. Hope to train with you guys. We want to make the world a safer place by making good people more dangerous. Back to the podcast. Out. Boom. Boom. What's going on, you guys? Byron Rogers here. We got another episode of the Protector Podcast, but this one's real world, man. I'm excited. Um, this is something I'm definitely liking to do a lot more of. If you guys know anybody who's been in real world uh, confrontation, let me know. We'll dive into it, get us connected because ain't no teacher like experience. You know what I'm saying? So um, I've got James Guthrie with me today and uh, it's an honor. How you doing, James? Hey, Byron. How's it going, bud? Good man, good man. Hanging, glad you're here. You know, with all your digits and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, and for those of you who don't know, James is going to tell a story here. But he was in an altercation in his workplace, machete wielding attacker inside a building, close quarters, and um, he had to go ahead and whip it on, man, and do a lot of the stuff that we watch and <laughs> that we that we train for, you know, and that some of us think we can do. But this was a moment where he, he got to find out really, you know, what he was able to do. And fortunately, he's here with us today. So, we're yeah, I've uh, I've told this story, you know, several times. I've done some different interviews and stuff. But uh, it's funny because I've told this story before I saw the video running off just what I remember. And then mm -hmm. I've told the story since I've seen the video. And the stories are pretty close. But the, I definitely remember doing more <laughs> than than when you see the video what i actually was doing so but you know <laughs> yeah man you know the video isn't in high depth so you know yeah. maybe you were in there and you chopped you chopped you know mixing it up mixing it up spartan helmet action you know so, <laughs> i you know, you know the reality is i'm i'm you know, old school Trekkie, man. I should have just done the Vulcan neck pinch and been over, you know? <laughs> and, and yeah, 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 and just dropped him right there, you know? Because the camera didn't pick it up. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man. So, you know, I always like to start off the podcast with this main question, you know, 
who are you at your core, man? You know, so people can really understand who James is. Yeah. So, um, first and foremost, I'm, I'm a God loving man. I, I'm a very religious guy and, and you'll hear from my story a little bit that especially since this attack, I've, I've, it's strengthened my faith and, and, uh, and there's actually a point in the attack where, um, I thought everything was all over and I, I was content with it because I, I felt like I, you know, when I go, I'm going to heaven. So, um, that's just, and there's a, there's a strength in that, you know, um, those of us that are saved and, and, and and know that like understand that strength. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, at my core, that's what I am. I, I, I'm married, uh, my wife's a quadriplegic, so I, I take care of my wife and, I have two kids that are doing awesome and I just, I'm a family man and, and God loving man. And, and then that's pretty much the core. And then everything else comes out from that. Spans out from that, man. Sound like a good dude, man. Good. Yeah. Dude, Craig, go, go, I try. Go, 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 go. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, right. Or we, that's what we all do. And I, uh, yeah. no, I love that you said what you said, man. There's a lot of that warrior spirit, you know, knowing that you're settled and, and being able to look death in the eyes um, and, and know that you have, you know, where you're going and that gives us power, man. It gives us yeah. supernatural power. Like the, I think a full spectrum warrior, like your buddy's company name is, um, uh, what was his name again? It's Rich Graham. Slide. Yeah. Rich Graham's company. I love that name, man. But, um, I, I think that you gotta be spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, you know, this is really, this is really what it all comes down to. Cause when you are faced with something bigger and stronger than you. And and I have been in this position multiple times. We both yeah. been in Iraq. Yeah. Uh, I get hit by a handful of IEDs. And I remember praying to Jesus. <laughs> I remember praying to Jesus. Boy, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. And I remember coming back and, and getting a second chance at life as a result, you know, and uh man, you just if you're a fighter, you're gonna come up against things that are stronger than you. And you're gonna need mm-hmm. more than just what you what you think you got. So yeah, important. like when it, in Iraq and Afghanistan, my deployments I always felt like I was fighting a human being that that just made a, from my viewpoint, just made a bad decision. And yeah. um, but I didn't feel like it was anything supernatural. Like I, it was it was just pure right. human evil. And um, yeah. but I but I always remember I had a really good friend of mine who was a, a big atheist. He was a devout atheist. And he's like, yeah, if you ever hear me praying to God, like it's just never going to happen. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in a God. And, and we got into a, we got into an ambush, man. And over all the shooting and all the noise, and you know, like any, anybody who's ever been in something like that knows it's loud, man. I heard him. I heard him praying. And I, I literally, when we got done, I looked over at him. I was like, atheist, huh? He's like, (laughs) I, I don't know what happened. I'm like, I'm like, but you feel better about it, don't you? He's like, yeah, I do. I'm like, all right, we can talk later. <laughs> yeah, the truth came out of you. That's all yeah, your man. bull crap just yep. burned off, dude. And yep. you just, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a, it was a touchy, it was a touchy situation, man. But it was one of those things that, like, if if you're gonna, if you're gonna have that moment where you make that connection with God, like that was the moment you were gonna have. It, <laughs> it was like one of the, those. The it was one of those moments, reading. man. <laughs> it was that moment. Yep. That's awesome, dude. That's so awesome. anyway, um, I want to. Yeah. You know. But anyway, so um, yeah, I just uh, that that's kind of it's in a nutshell, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, um, just a big, just a big man about God. So, heck yeah, dude, I can respect it. Um, what, uh, and I am too. You know, um, what, um, so what happened, bro? Like, what happened? You, you know, <laughs> give us some context here, man. Break right, it down. Right. So, first off, I I work for. Uh, I was a branch manager for a staffing company. So we do like day labor. Um, for construction sites. So these guys come in, they, we open up at five o'clock in the morning, they come in and they sign in on a sheet. And then depending on how much work we have is how many guys we put out for the day. Around that time, we were, we were pushing 120, 150 guys a day out the door. Um, So that particular day, I think we did around 90 to a hundred. We're just a little, little, little short that day. So there was about a group of 10 guys end up not going out that day, which happens from time to time. Yeah. So that morning I wake up 
I was going to be driving guys to work because my, one of my van drivers was out for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was, I was going to be taking over and driving the guys to work. So the only thing I had to do that morning was get in the van, drive guys to work, go home for the middle part of the day, and then go pick the guys up at the end of the day. That's what I was supposed to do. Seemed like an easy day. You know what I'm saying? It seemed pretty straightforward. Easy, pretty easy money. Knowing that I was going to be sitting down driving in a van, I wasn't even going to take my, my concealed carry to work that day because I was going to be sitting down. So I was like, Anna in a van with a bunch of people and all that stuff. I'm like, and it's uncomfortable. You know, those arguments <laughs> that you always have in your head. All those little, you know? yeah. What's, yeah. I mean, what, we all what go through happen? it from time to time. You what know, could happen? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially when you go how many days without ever pulling your pistol for, for any reason? You know, like how often does that happen to somebody? Yeah, and then, yeah. so so when that when there, there's that little moment of, well, this is going to be uncomfortable, sometimes we go, okay, maybe I don't need it. And so that was kind of the yeah. morning I was having. I also have a service dog who is a, a trained protection dog. And, oh, um, but I being in a van with all these guys, I didn't want to bring my dog. So I left my dog at home. I left my pistol and I yeah. was getting ready to leave. Well, thank God this, you know, the, the voice of God again, like I was like, you know what? I should probably bring my pistol. So I went back in the house, grabbed my pistol. And then I went to work <laughs> Got there. Picked the guys up, took them to work. Excuse me. Um, took them to work. And then I was going to go home. And then I was like, you know, I, I better swing by the office. I was like, I'll call, see if they need me to come by. I chose not to call. I went ahead and went to the office, which and high, like later on, after talking to my coworker, she thanked me for not calling. She said, because if you would have called, I would have told you to go home and you wouldn't have been here. Um, so I went ahead and went yeah, by the office. Do. Just figured you'd drop by and help out. Yeah, Most people would just home, bro. Yeah, <laughs> just check on people. That's just, just the kind of guy you. I am. So I was like, yeah. all right. So I get over to the office. I'm there about not even five minutes. I'm there like three or four minutes. And um, one of our regular workers comes in. Now, this guy, we've been, we've been putting him to work for six to eight months every day. Um, he didn't go out to work this day just, just because uh, we didn't have enough work. It was nothing personal. Yeah. It just, we just didn't have enough work and we, we, we just yeah, worked our way down the list and, and he came in later than some of the other guys. So, yeah, so he, so he got turned away and we're, you know, we told him come back tomorrow, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he came in about five minutes after I got there, after I got back and he was walked in with a backpack, which 98% of these guys come in at all hours of the day, not just the first thing in the morning, all hours of the day, just checking to see if we have work. And they all have backpacks. A lot of these guys, um, just because of the nature of the kind of work we do, a lot of these guys are homeless. A lot of these guys live in shelters. So they carry everything they have in a bag everywhere they go. Yeah. Um, so he came in with a backpack and we were like, hey, man, what's up? And then went about our business. So my coworker mm -hmm. is working on some stuff at the counter. And I've got, I'm working on a wall on a, uh, what we call our driver's board, updating the driver's board. So I have my back to everybody. Yeah. I hear this, like I hear this uh, loud bang. And when I turn around, the bang I heard was a machete hitting my friend's neck. Yeah. So if you see the video, you'll Which see we will like shortly, you guys. Yeah. We so will, when you we'll see, play the video. We're going to get walked through this whole thing. <laughs> when you see the video, I, I always warn people so just real quick, kind of like a down a rabbit hole, but it's not going to take very long. Yeah. I got awarded a, a good citizenship award from the um, city of Orlando police department. The chief of police nice. put me in for an award um, because of what I did. And nice. yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah. Like um, good cookie. yeah like well, because good like, cookie. yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, like in this, in this, and don't want to get too much into anything, but in this political climate, sometimes you worry about, is anybody got, got your back when it comes to like city officials and, and stuff like that. So that, that was really good to get that award. Cause it really made me feel like, Hey, these guys, like they got my back, you know? So that's, yeah, that's um, warm and fuzzy, man. That's very yeah. Warm. Yeah. So, um, but when, when I got the award, I didn't know they were going to show the video while they were presenting me with the award. And it's the same <laughs> video, it's all the same video, it. same video you're going to show. We're, so people yeah, will see. Yeah, we'll kick it on here in a second. But yeah, they were all and, about it. Like they were like, and then, <laughs> then yeah. he defended himself and against there was, the wheel. <laughs> There was kids in there, like little kids. 
<laughs> and they didn't say nothing, man. They were like, yeah, we have a quick video. And I'm like, the video and i turn around and look at the screen and i'm like oh because because i'm like there's kids in here you know so i didn't but i didn't yeah. say anything i'm just like oh no and my family was there my family's all seen the video so that it's fine but yeah but my family was the same way they were like holy cow like you couldn't you couldn't say like warning it's very graphic and it starts graphic off content. really bad <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so yeah because it's it start. i mean obviously it starts off very violent you know it's it's right. just i mean right off the bat there is no slowing down with this thing it's like the beginning of a guy Ritchie movie <laughs> yeah, literally man so yeah. we got up here kind of at your guys is like one o'clock there's a door there's a dude with a blue shirt mm-hmm. that's the guy that's, that's the guy that's about yeah. to come in and uh, you'll see in the video we don't call him down. suspect because we know exactly what he did <laughs> yeah man for sure yeah wham that was a loud noise yeah. <laughs> that that hit i'll like i can still hear it in my head like it sounded it sound like a bat hitting a baseball that's what it sounded really, like man at so first visual. until i until I saw the video, I thought it was the door slamming. And that's why I turned around because I thought somebody slammed the door. I was turning around to be like, Hey, why are you slamming my door? Right. And, uh, and then that's when I see him. Yeah. And that's when I see him with the machete. So the thing that saved her life, because he was trying to take her head off, um, is you'll see the machete turns in his hand. Oh yeah. Right about here. He goes sideways. Yep. And it hits her flat. So you ah, see it's like so it a bounce pancake. off the shoulder or something. Yeah. Or? Well, it's the angle because she was kind of bent over and he's a taller yeah. guy. So he was trying to get over the shoulder and kind of a, almost a downward swipe. So Man, when he did that, it turned in his hand mm-hmm. and hit her flat like a pancake. And that's what that's what made that loud smack. So it that's bent the grace, machete. Man. It hit so hard. It bent the machete and it pulled like the machete came out of his hand. It hit so hard. Well, yeah, he looks like he yanks back here pretty hard to get that thing out of there. To yeah, well, to it, it wasn't get control over it. It wasn't like it was just laying there on her neck, like it just was kind of just really. There. It, it didn't. Wow. It, it it had cut her, but it was a it was an yeah. impact cut. It was like just a little little cut on the um, uh, you know, on the back of her neck, but like nothing. It it was barely even bleeding. But um, and that that's like you know when it comes to weapons, um, you know. We have all these weapons that we believe are so formidable, but there's so much chance and there's so much just like chaos in actual combat with another human being Yeah, that it's like really understanding what your gear is actually going to do and what your, you know, firearms actually going to do and the blade you've been carrying around is actually going to do. Yeah. This is why training at speed um, and training, you know, being able to replicate your training in some type of a highly turbulent environment is so important, you know, like the organic medium stuff we do with Ed or even the Craig Douglas stuff that we do where it's like, all right, we're going to pick up the speed and intensity. We're going to actually see what it's like to draw uh, your weapon under human pressure, man, and chaos, you know? So that's intense. That's good. That's good to go. That's that's, that's the takeaway. It, uh, like it, like watching it doesn't doesn't bother me in the in the like oh uh, like I like it free it wigs me out or anything. It's just yeah. watching it is just like like it's still this months later. This happened in February. Like it's still uh, it almost seems like it didn't even happen, man. Like it's so it's so yes. surreal. Like just the the violence of it, you know. Like it just was it, yeah. it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, no, I've been on a few podcasts talking about stuff that we did in Iraq, and and in my mind, I'm like, man. Like, did that re- that really happen? Man? Yeah, you know, you're yeah, sitting yeah. where you like, man, we went yeah. that actually, we actually went through that stuff. It's wild how the brain just yeah. like and communicating about it and stuff helps you normalize it and pack it away in yeah. safe places. But um, yeah, like I'm a big advocate for for talking about stuff, man. Like like and and getting all the feelings out, whether they're happy, sad, mad, whatever it is. Like that's that stuff's cathartic, man. It, it really helps people. Yes. Like most most people that are committing suicide and stuff are like for some reason, whether they feel like they don't have somebody they can talk to or they 
they feel like they don't have somebody they can relate to or whatever the case may be. That's why they're doing it because they're holding all that stuff in and, and then it just festers. Man. Yeah. No, I, I, on that, any veterans or anyone who's been through yeah. PTSD, that's real. That's a lot of what they told us coming out of combat. Like, Hey, talk about your stuff, get it out, process it, talk about it in safe places with safe people, um, go through it, help you. It helps your brain normalize it and, and, and it helps your brain process so that audible processing loop is big. I do have a master's in psychology. It's very cathartic. Yeah. Writing is also very cathartic. Um, these are other measures you can use. I did write a book about it called Finding Meaning After the Military. You guys can find that on my website. It's helped a lot of people. Um, but that's a great point, man. Um, yeah, like quick. one of the one of the things like a lot of people don't don't know is the actual like basis behind doing an AAR, like in the military, we talk about an after action review. Um, yeah. one, one of the reasons for doing an AAR is one info, like we need the Intel, but it's also yeah. the starting process of working through what just happened. Like that, right. that, that's the actual core idea behind it. Like let's, let's get the Intel, but we're also opening that communication factor. So you're supposed to be talking to your, your chain of command and then your, your buddies, your, your whatever. And yeah. like, that's the whole start mm -hmm. of the process. hundred percent. No, that's important stuff. Real quick, man. What? So to, to answer this question that I know everyone has, and I had when I was watching the video, I was like, what's going on with my man just waltzing around this corner here? And, yeah. and, and, and you were saying, so everyone had a backpack, but he just kind of like walked in here. This door, is this like a yep. door that should have been locked or is this like, yeah, so these guys usually our company, get back here or what? No, our company policy is that door is supposed to be locked. So um literally 60 seconds or so before he came through this door we had a driver that was going in and out of that door he was cleaning so he was cleaning yeah. the lobby area and he was cleaning up outside and um unfortunately i don't want to get too much into you know our security and stuff like that like it, it should have been right. better yeah. right so um there was there was something with that door that that i had requested that yeah. never got, never got fulfilled. Um, yeah. so it, it, it was not doing what it was supposed to be doing. Now okay. yeah. you can sit there and say, well, that this is, this is the, this is the product of, of not securing that door. Another way that I look at it is he had intent, like his, his intention was to kill somebody. Maybe yeah. it was her, maybe it was somebody in general, but he had intent. And if you create an obstacle like that, the intent's still there. I'm not taking the intent away. I'm just making it harder. Right? right. So my, when I look at this, I go, yeah, that, that should have been locked. But the other thing I worry about is at that point, he may have taken her head off because he would have just came right back to this window and swung from, from the front side at her. Yep. Yeah. So, and yeah, I mean, no, but that's you can play great... what ifs all day. So <laughs> yeah, man, no, that's great. I think yeah. the main, another huge takeaway for anyone watching this, especially civilians who like, us military folks have a tendency to like be like, no, the door is supposed to be locked. I will always lock the door. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, why isn't this door locked? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. we have a tendency to be those guys in a space, but you guys got to realize, you know, the systems before you start pressing flesh against your enemy, think, look at your environment today when you're in your office or at your home and think about the systems that you can have in place that can make it more difficult for someone to attack you. And it's doors being locked, it's geographical barriers, you know, like making it so that they have to come around your desk after they come into the door, giving you time to assess them while they're making uh, their way towards you, things like that. What in your environment could you use as a weapon? You know, these are, if you don't have a weapon, like these are things that are like worth thinking about before this type of altercation. How could you reposition yeah. your office maybe to, to make it harder for someone to get to you and and things like that and, and, and honor those systems that are put in place to protect you or put them in place um, before something like this happens, you know, that's, that's yeah, like one of the problem. biggest downfalls with this setup that we had was that it, it required a key to unlock the door. And yeah. um, when, when I took over this office, this office has been in, it's been here for years. When I took over this office, there was no keys to any of the doors. So yeah. In hindsight, what should have happened is I should have went ahead and bought a new a new door handle with a new key and everything yeah. for that. But I did what my company told me to do, which is put in a request and and they'll, they'll take care of it. And it wait. never got taken care of. This is not me 
down, like dissing my company or anything. I love my company and my company is still yeah. taking very good care of me. So it's not, yeah. it's not that it's just, it's, it is the situation is, it is what it is. The reality is what it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I didn't replace the the door handle on it and should have, but nobody had a key to it. So if you're going in and out of that door constantly, it's like, we just got Never to the point where locked. we didn't lock it. Keep in mind, yeah. there was nobody in the lobby when we started cleaning and all that other stuff. And we were doing all this. There was nobody there. We were the employees, the direct employees were the only people in that building at that time. So yeah. when he, when he walked in, like I said, my driver had just walked out 60 seconds before he came in the building. So again, yeah. there was nobody else in the building. Yeah. And that's, that's a huge, another huge takeaway is make sure your systems are uh, easy and comfortable because the human is the weakest link and you will take, you will eventually discipline never lasts. You will eventually take the path of least resistance and your protocols will uh, erode away. The the attrition will happen. Entropy will happen. And then you won't be protected. So look, convenience is huge when it comes to diet and security systems. Uh, so, all right, solid. So blue shirt guy makes it yep. in the building. He takes his first shot. You can see the machete's already bent at this point, fortunately. Yeah. When it hit her in the neck, it, it hit so hard. It bent it. And, and dude, let me, let me tell you the, the video is kind of fuzzy. It is what it is, but, um, that was, it, it wasn't like some, some knockoff made out of like a car part machete. Like this was a stout, thick machete man like it was it was no joke like people were like oh man that thing's such a piece of junk it bent no that thing was that was a it was i picked it up like when the when you see the video at the end like i pick it up and i'm looking at it and i'm like man i can't believe that thing bent like i didn't even realize it was bent (laughs) wow it's a working man's tool you know and those are the guys you actually you know those are the guys you really got to watch out for the guys that work with their hands every day because they understand how to use their tools, you know? So, uh, that's, that's significant, man. It looks, and then here, it looks like you, so you turn around, we're going appendix. Yep. So, uh, all right. You can start off wherever you want here. All right. So he, he hits her in the, in the back of the neck. Now she didn't, she received blunt force trauma injury to her neck, but n- no like severe lacerations of a minor cut. What okay. happens though is the machete's hanging on her neck. He has to re-grab it because it came out of his hand. Yeah. When he re-grabs it and pulls it off of her neck. She had reached back because she didn't realize what happened. She was like, what the heck? And she reaches back. The machete comes across and slices the artery in her wrist. So oh, that's where the blood on the floor hits. Yeah. So it actually okay. severs the artery. So wow. blood just starts shooting out of that thing, which I didn't notice at the time. Like obviously with everything going on, but, but blood just started. That's where all you see all that blood on the floor right there by her feet. That's all her. Yeah, man. Like, it's sprinkle. like, cause it's literally shooting out of her, out of her mm-hmm. wrist. Um, and then, so she runs there's an office back there. She runs into the office and tries, you know, calling nine one one. And then that's when she realizes her wrist is cut. Um, yeah. so I turn around, I see the machete laying there. I, it, again, when we talk about, and, and, you know, you know, this from psychology and stuff, when we talk about the brain and how long it takes to see something and then realize what's going on, the guys that, that teach this psychology stuff, they'll, they'll tell you, like, if you know somebody, if you personally know somebody, the amount of time it takes you to realize something crazy is happening is longer because you know that person. So your head, your brain's going like, is this really happening? Like, am I seeing this? Like, you know, so it, it may be, you know, a, a set amount of time that your, re, your reaction time is, but now we've, we've in like, we've increased our reaction time, um, in the negative because like what we're, what we're looking at is we know that person. So it takes even longer to process that information. So, yeah, um, bro. because it's a familiar this face. Is, this is not, not a lot of distance, bro. I got to give He's, you props on this draw under pressure, yeah. your ability to recognize and go straight to work. Yeah, that looks like you were you were making some moves, man. He's six like, that's three. That's pretty impressive. To me. So he's six three. I'm six yeah. foot tall. He covers this distance in literally like two strides. Yeah. Um, my I got I drew and got a shot off in a second. I got I drew and got two shots off in a second. Really? Yeah. Wow. So if I so you- it was actually my my draw and shot time is sub second. But, yeah. um, for, for the draw and the two shots, 
but the amount of time it takes me to go through the OODA loop and all that, all that stuff, like to go through the processing and all that is just over a second. Dude, if you include, if I you mean, include all that. So you train <laughs> that, that sub second draw or what? Like you, is that something that you train uh, I, a lot? I do, it, I do and I don't. So did? yeah. So what I do, I don't shoot a lot. I, I hardly shoot at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't, I don't have a lot of trigger time. So, right. but what I do is every day I draw my pistol every day. So every time I get dressed and I, and I put my pistol on, I'm the kind of person where like, I want to know that this t-shirt I'm wearing is going to, going to move right. And I want to, and if it doesn't, I put on another shirt. So nice. I want to know that I want to know that the pants I put on that the holster, cause I got a gut, you know, I'm a dude with a gut. So like, I want to know that like, I'm not, I'm not tightening my belt too much so that if I go to draw my pistol, my stomach's in the way, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, so I, I think all these things through because, and this was all before this. So I've drawn that pistol from that holster and that, and that those pants and that shirt a thousand times probably because I'll do it every day. I get dressed, I'll stand in front of my mirror. I got a mirror in my bedroom. I'll stand in front of it. I clear the pistol. I holster and I'll do five to 10 draws just to get the rhythm down. Okay. Got it. And I'm not doing it for time. I'm just doing it to get, just to get that battle, that battle rhythm down. And, um, yeah, just to get that software and so, spun up and, 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 yeah. you know, and so the other thing is great, like, great matter, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll get at the house and we'll get comfortable. So we'll take our pistol off, you know, trying to get comfortable. And then well, I got to go to the store. So then you go to put everything back on. I'll do another five to 10 draws. And I might do that seven Dude. times in a day. If I'm going in and out of the house, like that's just me. Like, it's just implanted in my brain that every time I put this on, I do five to 10 draws every time. doesn't matter that, if I've worn those clothes a, a hundred times, I still do it. And that may have saved your life. But we that's, about, and that's where that came from. Yeah, bro. Because we talk about, you know, I always say protection is more than just a job. It's a lifestyle. And when you're in these situations, you're going to retard, you're going to perform at your baseline of performance you know like you, the 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 software the quality of that yep. software the quality of those lines you put in the gray matter of your brain that's really what's going to carry you you're not going to be warmed up and yep. have already shot a couple rounds exactly and yeah got all the shakes yeah. out you know nah that's not what you're going to do you're cold and on yeah. demand and all that's going to be there is your baseline of performance and practice makes permanent okay so that's what you had here man because that is a very impressive draw under pressure with a possible target i mean in the way man so your ability yeah. to shoot from that position uh with the chaos in the environment that that's that's ultra impressive dude i uh yeah it's uh you don't just, you don't just get it, that you know for for me like and there, there are firearms instructors out there that'll argue this all day long, but everybody has their own philosophy. But for me, mm -hmm. like pulling a trigger is pulling a trigger. Like yep. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a competition shooter. I don't need to be excellent. Right. right. So, but I just need my rounds to go on target. Um, it, would, I, would I rather have shot the guy twice in the chest? Yeah. I, I certainly would have rather shot the guy twice in the chest. It may have saved my arm and, and some other injuries that I got from the attack, but, but Hey, I like, I, I still got out of two shots with, with my coworker cutting in between us and my other right. coworker running behind the guy. I got two shots off one. I had to pull because I didn't want to hit my coworker. And then the other one I put in his arm. So, yeah. um, I mean, it is what it is. You're in the fight. Yeah. And that, yeah, no, that's awesome. That drawing before you leave the house every day in your clothes, at least three draws. That's a Mike Pannone. Some of the Mike Pannone's talked about a few different times on my podcast and, and that we've talked about in person too. So that's coming from some of the guys at the highest levels as well. You yep. guys, protection's a lifestyle, live that lifestyle so you can perform when the time comes. So he rolls in, you get two shots off. You hit him once in the arm. Looked like maybe yep. that left arm. that, that Yeah. So arm. that left arm with the machete, it actually hits him in the forearm. Okay. Um, and, uh, like if you're, if you're able to, and I'm not, I'm not telling you to do it, but I'm just saying like, if you, if you have this video and you're able to zoom in on the arm, you can actually see the, like when it hits the back of his arm, but, <laughs> like it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty crazy to see, but, um, uh, but like yeah, so what, what actually happens here is, and this is where, when, when I've told the story before I saw the video, I remember it differently. Like I thought, so I got hit by the machete in the wrist. It actually yeah. flayed open my wrist. Um, okay. 
I thought it happened right here, but it didn't. Um, I, I was under the impression that he hit me when he, when he collided with me, but it yeah. was during our, our actual hand to hand where I got cut with the machete. But, um, but what happened here, I thought he knocked me down, but I actually tripped over that dang basket that's sitting there at my feet. <laughs> that's why I went down. <laughs> so, so like when we talk about basket. things aren't in a perfect world, right? Like reality is not yeah. perfect. Right. So, um, it's really hard for people to see because, and, and I'll go through some of the things people have said, you know, in comments on videos and stuff on this video, but um, the angle of this camera makes it really hard for people to tell, but this yeah. chair right to the right of me is yeah. actually out a little bit. So the, where I was standing, I had no way to parry to the right, right? Yeah. I couldn't go left because of the counter. I couldn't go right because if I would, if I went, if I tried to go right, I was going to have to step forward towards him and then go right, which yeah. makes no sense. Right. So if I'm going to do right. that, I might as well just plow right into the guy. So right. um, and I couldn't go back because of the wall. So when I tried to slide my right foot back to get a, a good, stable platform, because I knew he was going to collide with me, that's when I hit the basket. And and that's when I started to hit the floor. I had I was like, whoa. Yes. <laughs> so Bro. the other thing is you see her run between us. I'm trying to get the pistol up to shoot without hitting her with the pistol. If I would have came right. straight up, it would have went right into her right into her. So, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm like leaning back, trying to get it out and up and, uh, and around her. And then, you know, so I get the, I get the two shots off. So then, so then he swipes down my, my, th so again, because I've practiced this draw so many times in this moment, I'm not thinking, grab the shirt, pull it up, grab the pistol. I not, not <laughs> even once, not even once did I think yeah. about anything to do with my draw. So, Good. um, my body's just doing it. I, I don't, I don't believe in quote unquote muscle memory, like, cause muscles don't have a brain, like it's still your brain doing yeah. it. So I, I don't like using mm -hmm. that term, but, but, um, my brain is just, it's all doing that subconsciously cause it, it knows what to do. So you're running um, unconscious, competent programming. Yeah. What I am thinking is, and I remember these thoughts very, I, I remember every thought I had that day very vividly just like it happened yeah. right, right now. So yeah. I remember going, all right, dude, this shooting. somebody's not like the movies. You're not going to hit the guy in the big toe and he's going to fall on the ground. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm like, you could put five rounds in this dude's chest, but forward momentum is still forward momentum, whether he's falling or, right. or whatever. Um, and we've all seen the police videos okay. where cops shoot guys like, 10 times they still keep running at them you know so oh, yeah um like so i'm i'm while i'm drawing i'm reasoning in my head i'm like okay he's gonna even if you shoot him in the chest he's still gonna attack you with the machete what you the only thing you need to think about is don't let the machete hit your head or your neck give up anything yeah. else yeah, not the head you, or neck yeah. Yeah, yeah so i'm right-handed so i chose to give up my left arm I was like, I would rather yeah. take a hit to the left arm than anywhere else because I can still stay in the fight. So yeah. those of us that have done any type of knife fighting, we know, you know, like I've studied some knife fighting over the years. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, they teach they like one of the the best lines I ever I ever learned from a knife uh, fighting instructor was, um, he, he's like, look, you're in a knife fight, you're gonna get cut. The key yep. is for you to decide where you get cut and not the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's all about feeding like certain parts of your arms and stuff where there's not arteries and all these other things. So like, that's my idea. Yeah. My idea is to take my left arm and turn it out and let them yeah. take the impact get on the, the outside. Of, yeah. So um, that was my plan. So that's why the left arm shoots like that. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and that's what Good. I thought had happened until I saw the video. And, and then I realized it was way less fancy than that. I just fell on the ground. <laughs> well, and the other huge takeaway too is like whether you're when you're studying combat, you're studying taking life and saving life. Understanding the anatomy is huge, man. It's yeah. one of the first things they teach you in jail when they're you know turning you into soldiers. Like you need to understand the anatomy. You need to understand your anatomy. You need to understand how to stop the bleed, how to start the bleed. And so yeah. knowing that, like, hey, man, you know these arteries are up under here. I can expose this. This is pretty much, uh, you know, this is less lethal for me to get, take a shot in. This stuff is valuable stuff to know. And it's amazing how quickly all this information just like comes through you yeah. in seconds.
one of the one. like for for the average one person second. like if you want to see like a a, a movie that that touched on the subject of knife fighting i mean the, the best i've ever seen it there's a movie yeah. out there with tommy lee jones called the hunted oh yeah um, and it's with tommy lee jones and and uh, benicio del toro and oh, yeah. they have a knife fight scene i mean they get they both get just ravaged by the blades but that's how oh, knife yeah. fighting is everybody's getting cut when a knife comes out. Yes. Yeah, no, you're getting so, cut, man. It's like swimming in the yeah. ocean and get wet. And yeah, the, uh, it's like we people that go, I want to be a fighter, but I don't want to get hit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, 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 this is part of it. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. we had Tom Pyre, man, who was with Syoc and those guys who did the, um, they did the uh, choreography for that yep. fight, man, uh, come in at one of our hard skills intensives, a protector symposium that we just had. It was amazing, man. The stuff we learned was awesome. Yeah, like I, I, that, that movie, I remember years ago when I saw that movie, I was like, Ooh, I want to learn how to knife fight. Like I'm weird like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, no, it's, it's, it's a different thing. And it was interesting too. Cause that whole theme for that symposium we did was knife fighting and hand to hand stuff. And it was, uh, there was less interest to, in that one than any of the other ones we did. And it, I think it's because blade work, man, it takes a certain type. There's a certain type of yeah. intimacy and visceralness to it. Yeah. Yeah. A certain type of person to get up in there and then really learn it. But knives are so powerful and so important. So yeah, um, a knife fighting good. is very gritty. It's very gritty. Yeah, man. So, so, um, so here, like I, I obviously I, get, I trip over the basket. Sorry, go ahead. Did you get another shot off on the way down here? I got two. So um, in total, there was two shots off. So you'll see if you play it in slow motion, you can actually see the slide recoil. That yeah. shot too. The first shot I draw and shoot, and that first shot beats the frame rate of the camera. So you don't even see, you only see one shot. Wow. But um, yeah. So one one bullet hit his arm, and then it ends up going into this little. There's like a little um, uh storage room you know back behind where that gray trash can is and then another one yeah. goes into the there's a file cabinet right um to the right of that female in the uh, black shirt there yeah um okay so, yeah, the second one goes in that file cabinet but uh but yeah so i got two shots off and uh one of them hits him like i said i pulled one and then one of them hits him and then he collides with me so i i love telling this story um like a uh like a, a guy Richie movie going back and forth but uh because yeah. as, like, as i talk about things I, I i remember other things so something i i really want to tell people because people are like well why didn't you do this why didn't you do that so just just a, a quick heads up just before this happened so this was on a tuesday i had just returned to work the thursday before this after being bedridden from covid for two weeks so oh, wow. my You're family got, shape. yeah, my family had gotten COVID and we were like, literally it was the worst. It was the sickest I've ever been in my entire life. Wow. Um, some people don't have problems with it. We all had bad issues with it. Like, like it we were bedridden bad, bad. for a long time. And so okay. um, I had just, just tested negative and finally was able to come back to work Thursday before this happened. And wow. um, I still was having that you know when you get like a flu you get that flu fog like your brain's not like oh, yeah. you feel brain kind of off in your head i still yeah. was feeling like that when this happened so i that's wow. that's another reason why the processing time took so long because i'm sitting there like i'm not hallucinating am i like for a split second you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like what so, is I remember this reality is this yeah. also I that i mean that. but that i've had that type of experience for sure when i'm like looking at something that's happening that's crazy, you know, yeah. overseas. And I'm like, is this real? Like, no, this is real. This is, this is happening. <laughs> you know? We're in it. You know, this is happening now, bro. Yeah. And that's so, wild. Um, and, and this dude does, you know, he, no, this guy's no slouch. You know, he's 6'3". He's a construction worker. That's what he does all day, yeah. every day. Um, he was a strong was guy. On my best day. Like, yeah. even if you take COVID out of it on my best day, he still was going to overpower me. Guaranteed. Yeah. He was just stronger than I yeah. was. I'm not, I'm not ashamed yeah. to admit that. So, right. um, so he, so then in this part right here, as he, he swings down, the machete actually hits the wall instead of me. So that kind of saved right. my arm in that, in that moment. However, his knee plows into my left shoulder and okay. dislocates it out the back. 
Whoa. So I actually get a posterior dislocation of my left shoulder. Wow. Um, now, the good thing is when I hit the wall, it popped back in place. <laughs> oh, geez, this stuff's happening quick, man. Yeah. So it goes out and then back in. So me goes out, comes right back in. here. Boom. You see that knee hits me right in the shoulder that pushes yeah. it out. And then the wall pushes it back in. So when, so I momentarily lose like function of my left arm because I have no strength in it because now all that, all that stuff in my shoulder just got torn. So, yeah. um, you know, so my arm kind of feels weak, but I'm still trying to work with it. So yeah. I'm hitting the ground. And in this moment, I'm going, you got to get on your feet, man. Like you can't be on your back with this dude with a machete. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you got to get up. So, um, I'll, I'll try, I'll start trying to get to my feet. I get to my knees, which is fine with me. I can work from my knees, but you'll see me roll over. Like a lot of jujitsu guys have given me crap over this. They're like, dude, he could have got a choke no, on you. I'm like, I'm like, dude, he had a machete. I don't care about a choke like, in this moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I need to get don't give your back up, man. Yeah. yeah. I need to get up. <laughs> yeah. Give They're like, back. Give I can't believe you gave up. <laughs> I, and one of my jujitsu buddies gives me crap over this. Every time he sees it, he goes, he goes, Dude, you totally gave up your back. I'm like, yeah, because I didn't want to get hit by the machete again. <laughs> yeah, like we're not doing jujitsu rules. <laughs> yeah, right now, man. Guys. We're, this, is, so, this is the other thing. Yeah. So, um, and and I got really fortunate. If this guy had any technique, he probably would have kicked my butt anyway. But uh, yeah. but anyway, so he, you know, I roll over my knees. I start working. Now, what I'm trying to do, you can't see here because he he's blocking the camera, but. This pistol I have is a Springfield XD. So if anybody knows anybody at Springfield, I need another one because the police have mine. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but this was a Springfield XD, which has a backstrap safety to it. So anybody yeah. who's ever shot a backstrap safety um, knows that if you don't have perfect alignment, yes, if you don't have perfect alignment from your wrist to your elbow, that, that grip, you can't get a shot off. So... Um, cause you're not engaging that backstrap. If you turn your wrist like this, you no longer are engaging that backstrap. So, right. So instead of where you have a Glock, you know, let's say a Glock that doesn't any gun that doesn't have a backstrap, but let's just say a Glock, like I can, if I'm holding it straight out, yeah. I can literally, I can literally turn my wrist like this and still shoot it. Yeah. You know, I can, oh, I can yeah. go any angle, you know, because the, the trigger is the trigger, right? So the triggers where the right. safety and it's all like that. Stuff a, it's so, like a remote. You push, yeah. pick it up, push the button. Exactly. So, um, with this, you have to, I have to work that angle. So what I'm trying to do, which is another reason why I'm not getting to my feet, the advantage for me in this position is being lower than he is because I'm trying to get my elbow down so that my wrist is in alignment with my elbow so I can work that back strap, right? Okay. So that's what I'm actually you trying to do. You still have your do. gun in your hand. Yeah, my gun's still in my right hand at this moment. And yep, so here, and so at this moment right here, he has yeah. the gun, Okay. Oh, so here's, really? Yeah. Okay. So it happens really fast. <laughs> so I didn't know that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it happens real quick. Right. And so, and we can, we can go down a rabbit hole with this if you want. So if you back it up a little bit, you'll actually see the gun hit the floor. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe you can't really see it at this angle, but anyway, so what happens is I'm trying oh, to work that angle. something on the floor there right there. There it is. It's on yeah. the floor now. Okay, so it's on the floor now. He picks it up. So. Yeah, yep. That's the scariest moment. That yes. right there. Because that he still has the machete. Right yeah, so he's still, oh, he's got the machete. <laughs> so in this, in this moment, he has the machete and my gun's on the floor. Oh, my God. So I, I, have no, I have nothing but my hands, right? So, so here's what happens. I'm trying to work that angle. <laughs> And I, yeah. I still to this day, I have no idea how that happened. Right. I just don't know. So, yeah. but I'm trying to work that angle because my thought is, dude, get the gun down, get your elbow down and get the gun at his chest and just start pulling the trigger until it doesn't work anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. right into his chest. And so that was, that was my game plan. As I'm working that he's got the machete and he's like trying to saw and cut me with the machete. So my uh. left hand, who's that's not real strong because it just got dislocated. My left hand yeah. is trying to control the machete so I don't get cut with it. And then my right hand's trying to work the gun. Well, 
he's his other hand is trying to work the gun out of my hand. So so he's trying to block from getting shot. I'm trying to block from getting cut. And we're both kind of just a, a back and forth. At some point, Does. again, I don't know how it happened. At some point, the gun yeah. falls out of my hand. I don't know. Hits the floor. Yeah. And then when it hit the floor, that's my like, oh, crap moment. Right. So I'm like, oh, yeah. oh this, this, this ain't good. So my thought is, OK, don't don't go for the gun. I'm like, just control the dude. Right. So I'm trying yeah, to I'm trying to control the, the guy again. He He's more he's more powerful than I am. He's stronger than I am. So um, at this point, my wrist has been cut. I'm I'm starting to bleed. Um, so he dives for the pistol. That's what he's doing right there. He dives for the pistol. Yeah. He grabs the pistol in his left hand. He's got the yeah. machete in his right. So he's still yeah. got the machete in one hand. Now he got now he's got the machete in one hand and the pistol in the other. I got, got all the weapons. <laughs> he's got, he's got everything. all the weapons. He's like he's winning right now. He's coming up <laughs> so, right now. So I see, and this is my this is my moment where I told you at the beginning of this, I felt content and I was ready to I'm ready to go. Right. Yeah, because okay. what happens hard. right here, and it happens fast, but what happens right here is he turns and I'm looking down the barrel of my pistol. And I actually see down the barrel of my gun. And oh, um, my gosh, like I'm, I'm fine talking about it, but it, I do get yeah. emotional talking about it. Like I, in that moment, that split fraction of a second, in that moment, yeah. my brain, you know, we hear our voice in our head, right? So, you know, we, we try to, we try not to tell people that we hear voices in our head, but we hear our voice in our head, you know? We so. all are having a conversation <laughs> all the time. Yeah, oh yeah. So in my head, I'm like, well, this is it, dude. Like, he's going to shoot you in the face. You're not going to come back from that. Like, it is what it is. Um, yeah. You're going to die. You're not going to see your family and friends. Like, this is, this is exactly what I'm thinking. You're not going to see your family and friends ever again. It's all over. And, yeah. And there was that brief second where I went, okay, okay. cool. Well, it is yeah. what it is. Like, you know, I, I tried and I lost. Yeah. Um, I, I sunk into being content with it. I felt in that moment, like, I don't know whether it was faith or what it was. I don't know what it was, but I was okay with it. At like, like, all right. Um, mm -hmm. But this is where... And you, people can call me crazy all they want, but this is where I heard the voice of God. Like he spoke to yeah. me in this moment. So I tell people what happened was there was another voice in my head and it was not mine. Like, I know what yeah. mine sounds like. This was not mine. And yeah. it drowned everything out. All the pain I was yeah. feeling, the lack of energy, fogginess in my head, it all went away in a split second. I felt like I got hit with a lightning bolt. Yeah. And and then I hear this voice in my head and it just, it yells at me. It goes, no, yeah, you cannot give up. You cannot quit. Yeah. If he kills you, he's going to take that gun. He's going to kill other people with it. You, you cannot let that happen. You need to fight. Yeah. And yeah. at the same time that I heard all that, I, I had more strength than I, than I even started the day out with. Like I just yeah. had all this strength and I was like, all right, cool. It's not, it's not my oh, time yet. Like we're going to do this. And, and I knew yeah. it wasn't my time. Like I knew that, that there was a chance. I didn't know I was going to win the yeah. fight, but I knew there was still a chance. So like, like I, somehow you just like saw the little sand in the hourglass. Like, oh yeah. yeah, it's not my time. Like I got, yeah, I got, there's I got still more sand there. I got this. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're gonna so, be all right. um, so I, I, you'll see me like parry. I dodge mm -hmm. my head and I parry um, right as, you know, right as he's attempting to get a shot he doesn't get a shot off but and i can i'll tell you why in, in a minute why he doesn't get a shot off but i parry it so that if he does get a shot off it you know it'll go away it's over there um yeah. but and he again he's still got the machete you see him raise the machete up so yeah so then i parry i tussle with him a little bit he loses the pistol and then when he loses when he loses the pistol that when he was back is the machete he's i guess he's more confident with that so yeah. um i was like once the pistol hits the ground i'm like all right i'm back in this fight like it's just it's just me you and a machete yeah. so um yeah but but you'll see us coming away from the wall that's because i'm twisting my body like a lot of people are like well you know why'd you come away from the wall because there's a lot of things we can do using a wall and all these different things like we know this from self-defense and yeah. stuff but but my brain is, I don't want him to get that pistol again. 
I got to get away from that gun, right? right? I got to take one of the weapons out of yeah, the, out of the equation. So, so yeah. I turned my body to bring the fight out into the open room. Also, I felt like I had a, I had more, um, I could do more with my body fighting. coming away from the wall. Cause I was having a lot of issues tripping on the, on stuff over here and everything. So, so I brought it out into the room yeah. and then you'll see me. I, mm -hmm. I just, at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to hold on to you, dude. I'm not letting go. Like it's you, me and this clinch yeah. that I got. And I ain't let go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because, and, and I can feel you all these little damage. wax, all these little wax and stuff he's doing. They, they cut me. Like when I got done with this, I had little cuts all over my back and body and stuff, but, but it is what it is. I'm still in the fight. So that's all that really yeah. matters. So then as we're tussling around, I cannot, these shoes are horrible, man. But cause I, <laughs> like every time I try to get footing to stand up, they're running shoes, right? So yeah, every time I try to get footing to stand up, like I'm back on my knees again. I was getting so mad at my shoes, man. I'm like, Jeez. what is wrong with these things? And so, um, like I, uh, finally we, you know, he, like, it looks like he flips me over, but the reality is I'm like, I, I can't stand up. So I'm just yeah. going to go to my back. Right. Because having studied jujitsu, not that I'm great at it or anything. I know, I know the basics, but I'm like, I'm comfortable on my back. I've wrestled for years in, in school and stuff like that. So, but like, I'm comfortable on my back. I'm like, okay, let's do this. So I roll mm -hmm. over, I pull him on top of me. Now I'm like, I'm just going to bear hug you because I can hear, like, I know the alarms going off. All these things are happening. Like, so the I know the cops are coming for you now, dude. Yeah. yeah. The, the cops are coming. I know they are. So I'm sitting here like, mm -hmm. okay, dude, I'm just going to bear hug you. And when the cops come, like, who, who's the bad guy? Probably the guy not wearing the company t-shirt. Right. So, yeah, um, so yeah, with the machete. Yeah. So I'm, so I, at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to hold this clinch and I'm just going to wrap you up and, and we're just going to hug it out, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> but, hug it out, brother. but when I roll over my back and I'm pulling him into me, like, yeah. It's the first time I'm able to look him in the eye and hmm. like, we're, we're looking at this each other's eyes. So I'll tell you right now, this is the first time I told you that when I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, I feel like I was, I was fighting humans, just human yeah. evil, making bad decisions. Yeah. In this yeah. moment, that was not a human being. That mm -hmm. man had That's a demon else. in him. That was yeah. e pure evil, man. Eyes were yeah. just like this, nothing but pupil. Because and you can sit there and say, when you're... no, go ahead. I was going to say like, you can sit there and say he, he was probably on a bunch of drugs or whatever. No, nah, man, I'm telling you, it, it wasn't that, that was, that was pure evil, human yeah, evil, man. That was like supernatural evil. Yeah. No. Cause even when you're fighting someone, man, like there's like a human element to it. Like mm -hmm. you catch eyes with a guy, you could be in a freaking fight at a bar. You hate this guy. You guys are fighting, yeah. but there's this like humanity to it. There's just like yeah. this. I hate you. I hate you. Yeah. No, I hate you. you guys are yeah. trying to get each other and you hate each other, but it's so still human, you know? Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. When and, you look in there, it's just this darkness and you're like, yeah, we're doing something else right now. And with, and with um, this guy, wild. like I've talked to him several times, so I know what his voice yeah. sounds like. And yeah. it's funny because I also tell people this, like th this whole time, there's no audio on this. So you can't tell, but this whole time, right. all he kept saying over and over and over again, is I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And it was not his voice. Like it was a, it was a supernatural. I'm telling you, the guy was possessed. You, nobody's yeah. going to change my mind on that. Nobody. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, and so I roll over, I'm pulling him in. I see this and, and this realization hits my head and I'm like, holy cow. Like I'm in a fight between good and evil at this point. Like that's what's going you through know. my head. Uh, and again, right into the, I'm just going to bear hug you. I'm going to hold on to you. Cops will come and, and they'll split us up. So um, at least that way you're not going to hurt anybody else. So uh, mm. she's in panic mode because she's losing a lot of blood. Like, like yeah. people are like, dude, why did she take off running? I'm like, dude, she's flipping out because she's got an she's arterial dying. bleed that's spraying everywhere. She has no, like, and mm. she's, she's just, she's not in her, her mind at this point. She's she doesn't even remember before. She doesn't yeah, even yeah. remember carrying this chair out of the office. Like she's like, well, yeah, did I do that? <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, at she's the end, never, end of the video, this video probably won't show it, but at the, at the end of the actual long, like security footage, like when the ambulance shows up and everything, they, they, they um, initially wrap her up and stuff. 
she walks back in and grabs her purse and everything. She doesn't even remember coming back in the office at all. Like wow. it's all the fog there. So oh yeah, because your um, brain is that trauma yeah. dealing with her. Trauma. Which and Real then quick. and then on the reverse of that, like I recall yeah. literally everything. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you're no more inoculated to that. You yeah. know, like you're yeah. more inoculated to that world. This is why stress is so important in training. Dude's demon possessed. Yep. You clinch with him. You realize this coworker runs by. She's leaking. She probably never experienced that before. She's totally. Man, I mean, I mean, she's got a little bit of a timer going on. Uh, and then it looks like he gets free. And is he chasing her out the door or is he because you're you're like the hardest person he's ever tried to kill? Like he's so yeah. upset right now with you. Dude, like, he, yes, he wasn't he wasn't ready for a fight. So that's yeah. the other, that's the other aspect of this, right? So here's another thing, just a little caveat. So yeah, when he was when he was asked to, well, he wasn't asked to leave. But what happens is when we put all the people out for work, we'll go, hey guys, like that's all we got for right now. If you want to call us later or come back or whatever the case is, you can. But as of right now, that's all we got. Um, you can hang out if you want for a little bit to see if something else comes up, or you can take off. Most of the time, yeah. they 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 just leave. So exactly. I was gone taking the guys to work. So she was the one that, that told them, um, yeah, you know, Hey, and she gave, gave him that exact spiel. So they all, everybody decided to leave. There's about 10 guys left over. He was one of them. Everybody decided to leave and everybody left. Nobody grumbled. Uh, you know, everything was fine. Um, evidently he, he was upset about it. So when he left, yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah. The only people who were in that office when he left were those two females. So ah. I firmly believe that when he came back, he assumed coming back to those two females. Yep. So, yeah. and he was probably also, like mad yeah. at those females. He's like, she just, she just ruined my life by not giving me work today. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't want to speculate where somebody's mind is, but I mean, it's highly yeah. probable, but, but like what I, when I try to put myself in his shoes, like I, and, and I, I don't need to know the reason why, like, I'm not that kind of person. It is what it is. Yeah. No, so, um, but when I try to put myself, be objective and put myself in his shoes, I feel like exactly that. I feel like he was upset at her. Um, because in his mind, she's the one that didn't put him to work. Yep. And, and so he left and he planned on coming back and killing her. Yeah. And, and nothing was going to stop him. So when he, came in because like you'll see like he comes around at the beginning of the video he comes around that counter there's a there's a another co-worker of ours sitting at that tape that that desk he doesn't even look at her yep he comes right around he his eyes right on her like he doesn't even look over at the girl at the desk yeah like, his eyes right on her he wanted to kill her yeah and then he and then he saw you and then he got yeah, to and work then, and then a realization hit him like oh okay but he was already in the motion. So he's like, he's, he's like, well, I'm already doing this. Like, let's make it happen. It. And he was not yeah. ready for the fight. <laughs> like, 100%. No, that's awesome, so, man. So what happens here is um, like, like I was saying, my plan was just to bear hug the guy, hold on to him. That's when I, 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 the dude's like, totally, he's not, not human at the moment. So he tries to choke me. So his, his, in his demented mind, he thinks what he's going to do is take and he puts his hand on my neck, one hand on my neck like this. So I was able to get the machete from him in the little tussle that we're doing that you can't see. I'm able to, to clinch down on the arm and the machete pops out and it just kind of like slides off to the side. You still can't see it, but it's not in his hands anymore. So, yeah. um, so then that's when I was like, okay, now there's no machete. There's no gun. I'm just going to hold you. Um, so then he takes his hand and he puts it on my neck like this, but he does it on the side. He's got his thumb pressing down on one, one of my arteries and he thinks yeah. that's how he's going to choke me out. Right. And you're like, I can just chill. You're like, yeah, I, just keep on I can do this all day, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and we, it, I'd studied a combative, so I, I'm a combative or I was a combative instructor for the army. So going through the combative school, one of the yeah. things they do which I think is a great thing to do. One of the things they do is they choke you out. Like you're going yeah. to get choked out. Go to sleep. You're Guaranteed because you need to know what it's like. Yeah, I got choked out. And you got to know how long you can hold out before it happens too. Because there's, yeah. there's, there's a certain comfort in knowing like how long you can be in a chokehold before you black out. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so 
Um, and I know that squad bay all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I know that. So I'm, so I'm sitting there like, even if you had me in a chokehold, I know how long I can last. I'm good with this. Right. So yeah, I don't need to struggle right now. Yeah. So I don't need to, to waste energy. So, so he's got me in this exactly. choke, which I know is not going to work in my head. I'm like, you can't choke. Like literally I'm thinking you can't choke me out like that. So I yeah. laugh like out loud. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it goes, it goes just like this, right? So it goes just like this. Like, I think that, and then I go, <laughs> I'm going to kill you like that. And I, <laughs> That's awesome. like, so good. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I don't know where that came from. That's just, that's just what happened. Right. So yeah, man. now what happened in my brain was when I laughed, it was yeah. a switch flipped. Yep. So at that moment that I laughed out loud, my, in my brain, I realized I could win the fight. I realized right. I was going to win the fight. Like mm -hmm. my, my, I laugh and my brain goes, Oh, you're going to win this. Like, yeah. this is your fight. There, there's nothing he can do. You're going to win. Right. So, so I, so I laugh out loud and then I look at him. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you super serious. And the second yeah. I did that, his, I'm no joke. His pupils go whoop, right back to normal. <laughs> yeah. And all fight went out of him. It was gone. Wow. There was no more fight left in the guy. That's when you see his head look up at the door and, and he's looking for a way out. And it's like the demon was like, Oh no. yeah, this, yeah. this isn't going to, this isn't going to work. Like I, like I'm out and, and yeah. just left him because the energy went, the fight went, everything went. He was looking yeah. for a way out at that point. And, wow. um, That's and sweet. so he realized that the, the same time that I realized I was going to win, he realized he was going to lose. Yeah. And that's awesome. And so, but in my, in my head, I You're thought like, he was looking for something. I thought he was looking for something on the counter. You know, yeah. I thought he was like, Oh, well, I can't get to the machete. Let me get to this printer and I'm going to smash a printer over his head. Like that's where my brain's going. Right. Yeah. You're ready so, to go a few more rounds. Yeah. Take the printer over the head and come so back. So when he goes yeah, to yeah. jump off me, you see me get my legs up in his crotch and I, and I kick cause I want to get as much distance between us as I can. So I can get on my feet now. Cause I dude, we're going to yeah. go. We're like, we're going to go now. Right. So like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm winning this fight. Play. Even if we got to duke it out, whatever it is, I'm winning. So yeah, I, I create distance. I think yeah. he's going to the oh. counter to grab something. So I pop up as quickly as I, as my body will allow me. I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old and I'm not. You got you shape, half so. a machete going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I, so I pop up. I see that he, I see that he doesn't grab anything off the counter. So yeah. my brain goes, grab the closest weapon. Cause I don't know where he's going. I don't know if he's turning around or whatever. So I grab the, I grab the machete land on the floor. I jump up. He's, he's out the door. And he's right behind my coworker. So at this point, I'm realizing he's, I think he's running after her. Like yeah. in my mind, he's going to go grab her and make, you know, and try to kill her. Like he just tried. Yeah. So that's when I ditch the machete and I go over and I grab my pistol. And, um, and then I, so I pull the pistol up. Now what he actually does is he, he pushes her out of the way so he can get out the door. Yeah. <laughs> he's leaving. He's done. He's, he doesn't yeah, want he's anymore. Over. Yeah. He's over. So, um, but I pull the pistol up and I get, I get the dice on him and, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like there is the thought in my mind, like just plug this dude. Right. Smoke this um, yeah. but uh, my decision at that point, right or wrong, I, I don't care what anybody says. I, I made the decision I made. My decision at that point is there's, there's no, there's no win to this. Like I'm like, I'm done. Right. He's yeah. leaving. It's over. Um, it is what it is. So I think it was uh, a good call, the other call. thing is I couldn't have got a Didn't shot off that. if I wanted to. <laughs> so yeah. now we'll go back to a really good possibility as to why I didn't get shot when I was looking down the barrel of my pistol. Yeah. The gun was in battery. Right. So at some point during this, this hand to hand fight we're doing against the wall, the gun yeah. goes into battery. So it's not going to shoot anyway. But so I mean, none of us. Of I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I got it backwards. Yeah, it, go, it comes out of battery. So, yeah. um, but there, so there's no way of knowing that at the time. So when I pull the pistol up and I put sights on, I'm like, wait a second. Oh, 
shit, I got, I got to clear it, man. I got to, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. so God was like, but, he's not catching a charge for shooting this guy in the back. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so his judgment falters. Exactly. I got it. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but now my left arm at this point, now my left arm, like, so there's some people that are like, oh, did you take a, did you take a shot at him? Cause I see the pistol dip. Like you, like, it looks like you pull the trigger and I'm like, no, that pistol dip is cause my left arm gave out because the, yeah. the shoulder had, had been dislocated. Like my left arm, literally like it, it, it just I'm goes done. like this, like, yeah. So all my energy is starting to leave now. My, my adrenaline, and everything is running out. So, adrenaline, and then you'll see me yeah. like, I don't know if, I don't know if this, this video probably doesn't have it, but, but then I start trying to, I, I'm working this because my left arm's not, I can't use my left arm. I literally can't pick my left arm up at, after, after this. Oh. And so I'm, I'm clearing the, the slide and everything on my belt. And so like, I work it, I get it, I get it ready to fire again. And then I'm still in combat mode because I'm like, I don't, he's going outside to grab another weapon. If he's buddies out there, like, I don't know what's going on. So I quickly, I clear it. I get the pistol ready to fire. And then I, and then I track outside. I'm like, I'm going to go clear the outside to make sure that nobody is going to come back in. Plus she's outside. And I want to make sure he's not in the parking lot, like smashing her. Yeah. So, Man. um, so then I, I go up to the, to the door. I it's big window, you know, so I can clear it. I clear it from inside. So I know I've got something between us as a barrier. I don't see him. I see like her and my, and my van drivers, my van drivers were outside the whole time this happened. They were like, what the heck is going on in there? You know, like they didn't want to come in cause they heard gunshots. They didn't know if it was, they didn't know, they didn't know they who didn't was want shooting to come in, cause they heard in, in their defense. So in their defense, okay. they didn't know who was shooting. They're not going to Valhalla right now. So yeah. somebody <laughs> they're like, they're like, dude, we know you carry a pistol. Cause I, I, I don't care about telling people I carry a pistol. Like they're like, we know you yeah. carry a pistol, but we didn't know if he came in with a pistol or not. So we didn't know who was shooting. So they're, they're hiding behind the van. Like who's come like, and the other yeah. thing is they, nobody's ever seen me without a hat. So, okay. So I wear a hat all the time. I have long hair and a beard. Yeah, and all that so stuff. Like, like who's yeah. Guy? So when I come out of the, when I come out of the office, I don't have my hat on. Everybody's looking at me like, who is this guy with a gun? Cause I had got the gun out, <laughs> you know? So, and then they realized oh, it was God. me, but, uh, so I cleared the parking lot. He had ran off. Uh, the cops caught him down the road. Um, yeah. but, uh, and then, you know, he's in jail right now awaiting trial. Good. So, um, along with my pistol sitting up at the police department, rusting away cause nobody wants to lube it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeez, man. Wow. That is a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Great it's all in a 30 job. second video, you know, it's all right there. <laughs> it's so much reality in that 30 second video. Like, like, damn, you know, like yeah. geez, people have it's like lived that when, much I, when that video went live, like it, 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 it you know went viral or whatever people call it, like yeah. you know, all over the place. I would find it like somebody would go, Hey, dude, it's on YouTube, or hey, dude, it's on Instagram, or hey, dude, it's over here. And so I would go on to wherever it's at and i would read through the comments and i'm just i like i'm reading and people are like dude like i would have like where's your situational awareness and i'm like dude like what you don't see in that video is we number one we know the guy we knew him yeah number two he walked in with a backpack everybody comes in with a backpack three yeah. we said hi to him we acknowledge the guy you don't see it in the video yeah. but we acknowledge the guy we're like hey bud what's up you know because we know him Right. Yeah. And then went about our business, just like you would do any day of the week with anybody, you know. Right. Yeah. So and situate like people start commenting on, on like, look at this lack of situation awareness. I'm like, I'm like, dude, like you don't have the full context of what's right. going on. So and, and I understand that, I understand, you know, some some people I'm not a person that, that assumes things. I just, you know, I I. I like to be objective, but I, I don't more, I don't yeah. automatically assume things. I want to have information. But mm -hmm. I can't understand people assuming that we didn't have great situational awareness from that 30 second clip because that's all the information you have. I get it. But at the uh, same time, I'm just like, like, you guys just don't, you just don't understand. Dude, and that's, <laughs> like the, that's what we're suffering from in social media, especially yeah. with the cop videos, dude. Yeah, man. I, I oh. almost dropped, I did a tactical protection review on this one and I almost dropped it, but I was like, let me talk to my dude, make sure I have all the facts and stuff. But yeah, yeah. that was one of the things that I said. I was like, this dude must have been a coworker or something because. Yeah. Nobody seems to care that he's in the environment. Like he's familiar to these people probably. Yeah. I don't know. And I was like, I don't know. But it just seems like everyone's already kind of pretty used to this dude. 
But it's one of the problems we have now is people see a video, like a cop video, and they're like, dude, why didn't they just run? Yeah. The civilian public knows nothing about combat. Yeah. Like, so they're watching something they know nothing about and reining in and actually being listened to about something they know. Now, you wouldn't walk into a doctor's office and be like, hey, bro, you need to do this, that, and the next thing. You wouldn't go into an <laughs> yeah. accountant's office and be like, hey, carry the four and add the, you know, self <laughs> yeah. bro. You Let know, me like, do you your taxes. Doing that, you know, like, you're not in the lawyer, in, in, you know, in court yeah. and being like, hey, dude, you know, like, and so it's amazing that people are like, well, I don't understand why these cops are, you know, and then they offer their like, shoot them in the leg or tase them or I something know. like that. And you're like, I know. Because that is the dumbest thing that they could have done. And <laughs> have you seen, have you seen the targets? Have you, have you seen the, the, there's a, a YouTube video and I'm still trying to find out if this is like a real, but the guy is, mm-hmm. is got like, it's a law enforcement officer. Like, you know, there's yeah. people that can dress up like police officers but there's people that like when they when they're in uniform like you're like that's a cop like you can just tell sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah exactly so like it's a law enforcement officer and mm-hmm. and again it could just be a fake video i don't know but yeah. but it's a he's shooting a target and the center mass and the head are red the arms and legs are green you get points for hitting the green That's how you get stabbed. I was like, man. "What?" That's exactly yeah. how that happened. Yeah. Oh man, but anyways, man, no, you did great, man. That was amazing. Um, you did amazing. You got through that thing. It was intense and it was long. That thirty seconds felt like an eternity. Yeah. It was great to be able being to in it was long it. too. Yeah, man, it was. When I saw the video and I realized it, like the from from contact beginning of contact into contact was like 32 seconds i was like no way <laughs> yeah what would you say about um physical fitness as a tool for self for protection yeah, I, I i wish i had more of it at that time <laughs> yeah um so like like when you want to if you want to like look at things that i took away from it versus yeah, like man. somebody like like somebody in the moment that took away from it like i i have no problem with being straight up i definitely was slacking in my physical fitness. It was really bad. Not just the COVID stuff, but just overall, like I'm, I'm, I'm heavier. Yeah, I don't move as good as I should. My mobility is not as good as it should be um, in general. Uh, so mm. yeah. So I, right now I'm, I'm deal, still dealing with the shoulder issues. Like I can't raise my left arm up over my head. Like it stops yeah. pretty much like right here. Um, mm. And, and I tore some, uh, injured some stuff in my, in my left knee during the, during the, the tussling and stuff like that. So I'm waiting for all these things to, I'm slowly trying to get back into, into fitness. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm full on dedication towards my physical fitness. Once things start, start healing back up. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm this whole thing definitely got me closer to God and my, and my, and where my faith was a little bumpy, those bumps yeah. have straightened out. Um, I, and, and I also feel like God's, um, got me through that and God's wanting me to use that to talk to, to, as a, as a segue to talk to people about God and, and to, um, preach the gospel and, and, um, and just, and just talk, um, share your reality, man. Yeah. It's been vetted by like fires, dude. I, I, on that, like I had the same type of thing happen to me. I'm in Iraq. I get blown up. You just get, I, I get hit directly with 62 pounds, some odd pounds of homemade explosives detonates right oh, underneath me. Yeah. I'm inside of a seven ton. Like uh, I'm, I, I don't feel it. I don't hear it. I don't see it. I'm just in another dimension. Like it's a yep. black room. Like it just looks like, <laughs> and I'm just like in yeah. here anyways, really long story short, getting to the part where, you know, I pray, talk to God. I'm pissed because I'm like, I haven't even been deliberate like ever. And I'm dead at 19. I'm a pile of guts on the floor in Iraq at 19 years old. Like I'm so pissed about that. And I just remember I saw my whole family apologize to everybody uh, for dying. And then, um, okay, I'll tell more of the story. So then I'm sitting there and then I hear my grandma's voice, like touched by an angel. It's cheesy. Just like touched by an angel. Yeah. And yeah. grandma's voice, like, and she'd been telling me this since I was little. She's like, Byron, if anything's ever stronger than you, you just, you just say, Jesus, 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 by the third time, it'll go away. So I'm yeah. saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> my dudes hear me, it's praying. I'm inside the underbelly of this seven ton that's been blown out, like crawling out. I see one of my buddies looking at my body. I'm standing next to him, looking at him, looking at my body. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff yeah. going on. Um, I'm out of my body. And uh, I'm praying and, and I'm like, if I get another chance to come back to this planet, I'm going hard, you know, like I'm going to, I am going to be deliberate. I'm not going to waste a moment. Like you're, I'm, I know I'm going to die and I know, yeah. and I experienced 
the most intense regret I've ever felt. It hit me in the stomach for just not really valuing the beauty of life mm -hmm. and seeing the miracle that this is, man. And, and, and when God sent me back to tether this to your story, man, I experienced that same righteous anger where I was just like, because my dad got shot at point blank range with a shotgun and he survived. Wow our dude you know? yeah yeah <laughs> and he told me and he told me he's like byron people die when they give up he's like the yeah. only reason i made it is because i knew i had family back here i couldn't die so i just fought and i fought and he was declared dead multiple times in the hospital he just fought you know and um and i remember hearing that like people die when they give up and then i remember uh, this righteous anger like it was like this righteous anger came over me as after I got done praying and I ended up back in my body and it was like all systems go and uh I kicked the back of the seven ton uh, ladder out that was like kind of welded shut on us from the explosion and then I black out but that righteous anger of like I'm not gonna die here like I felt like the Holy Spirit yeah. really gave me strength and power and it was like that warrior time like people think warriors aren't in the bible hey you know you got david tons you got of warriors, all kinds of warriors yeah. and men being men okay like ain't yep. none of this like jesus was a hippie guy like just read read the gospels for yourself you know and see kind of what caliber well, these men were when when people sit there and they go look you know i i've actually been told this i and and at the time i didn't have the words to rebuttal right yeah but but I've since gotten the words to, to rebuttal this, but, but I, but I've heard people say this before, like, dude, Christians are so weak because, mm -hmm. you know, because like they, they're just too nice and they, they, they don't actually put up a fight and all these other things. They're like, mm -hmm. they're so weak. And I'm, and I, now that I have the words rebuttal, I would say, you realize how much strength it takes to, to have the faith to walk like every Every single um, uh, disciple in the Bible dies a horrible death. Think Everyone about that. Was martyred. Your horrible example was death. martyred. Yes. Everyone was martyred. And forgive them, Father. They know not what they do is a lot of strength when you're on a cross. Dude, only. That's horrible, another kind of horrible way to die. Like, like horrible deaths for all of them. Yeah. And the thing is, the key is like, well, people go, well, well, yeah, but you know, like, like people die. Like they knew it. Like yeah. they knew doing what they were doing was going to end that way. They may not have known exactly how they were going to die, but they knew that it was going to be a horrible, violent death because of yeah. what they were doing. But yet they had the strength and the intestinal fortitude to continue doing what they're doing in the faith. I mean, yeah. obviously that was, that was the, the key part of it and the faith to continue doing what they were doing. Like the strength that it takes to be able to do that is just yeah. like, you can't, a as a human being, you can't do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Self preservation is, is is huge. It's a, it's a supernatural strength, and I believe that you know I know that the Holy Spirit's been with me through combat and was with you through that altercation, and that's my superpower, man. Like that's it's not me, you know. It's yep. it's it's you know that relationship, not religion. It's the relationship, you know. So yeah. that that's what I always try to tell people, man. And that's what got me through Iraq multiple times. That's what gave me strength, put me back in my body, gave me another chance, and then I jumped out the back of the seven time, like seven feet. I had blacked out, but my buddies are like, Hey dude, you know what you did? And I'm like, <laughs> I woke up 30 some yards away in the middle yeah. of the field, you know, got my guys out and we assaulted through, you know, the rest of the little village, but, and, and saved some dudes lives actually, which was just crazy. But that, that feeling, that righteous fear, I mean, that righteous ag aggressive, like righteous indignant anger that yeah. came over me and then i think for you too when you're in that and you're like i'm not gonna die here like mm -hmm. that's a very important moment so you that, know, and that I, spiritual bubble that yeah. that comes over you like if you've never felt that it is so empowering to, so to feel like you're on like you're on the side of god and god's on your side like you're a team you've you've yeah. teamed up you've combined and like that strength and the, and and just mentally that the power that gives you is is it's huge. It's very yeah. intense. 100%. Because yeah. I was crushed. And you were at your weakest moment, right? Yeah. Like I was obliterated. Like I was, my body wasn't working. Like I was completely destroyed in that moment. It was my weakest moment, you know? And I got powered back up, man. And that's what made all the difference that day, you know? And you're looking down the barrel of your own pistol, man. That's yeah. huge. 
Yeah. Like that's, and that's the other thing, like, you know, so a lot of people are sitting there like, well, why didn't you like the dude had a machete? Why didn't you like advance towards him? Like we all know, like, you know, for, for knives and and things like that, you want to close the distance, blah, 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 all these things. Right. And look, I, I trained guys in the army, how to, how to do these things. I've studied martial arts for years by watching that 30 second clip it looks like I'm just some random guy that's never done any training whatsoever, like other than pulling the pistol and shooting it. But the reality is like, I'm not great. I'm an okay fighter. Like I, I feel like even, even I, when I watch that video, I get a little upset. Cause I'm like, dude, why get a punch in here? I get this. My brain was saying, dude, punch this guy, get some blows in like, like I'm my brain's trying to do things, but my body was doing whatever God wanted me to. Cause he yeah. knew what was going to work. And he knew how that had to happen. And my body was just going through the motions. Because I remember very vividly going, dude, do this, do this, do this. And my body just wasn't doing it. It was just yeah. doing what it needed to because that's what God wanted it to do. That's I firmly yeah. believe that. And so like, um, but I, I tell people, I'm like, look, you know, when we talk about take, things I took away from it. So I made a decision and, and, that's the key, right? So in a self self defense scenario, you have to make a decision, and then once you make that decision, it's follow through. You can't go, yeah. oh, this isn't going to work. Let me do something else. Like you got to follow through. You got to commit to that decision, right? right so if man. you're going to close the distance, you better close that distance and fight. Right. If you're gonna mm-hmm. if you're gonna run away, you better run away as fast as you can, right? right? Whatever, whatever <laughs> yeah, you violence of action. To, whatever your decision is, you got to commit to that decision. Right. And, and know that that's going to work for you. So my decision, when I took everything in before I even drew the pistol. So that fraction of a second that I'm trying to analyze everything, it does go through my head, machete, close the distance, grab the guy. Like literally two weeks before that, my buddy, Rich Graham and I were, were, we were doing a video for his, for his website. And it was, it wasn't a machete, but it was a baseball bat. So we were, we were doing tactics against somebody swinging a baseball bat at you right yeah same exact scenario though right so like whether yeah. somebody's swinging a machete or Some type of tool swing that same right and we even talk about that in the video before this attack happened and so i knew what needed to happen if i closed the distance right however my brain says my brain says okay well i have a pistol he's got a machete there's a little bit of distance. I could close the distance, but I'm I'm doing the Rolodex, right? So I'm sitting there going, okay, well, he's going to be stronger than you. Um, again, I know the guy, so I know he's going to be yeah. stronger than you. You're you're having issues even processing information as it is with the COVID fog that you're in, you know, post COVID yeah. fog. Like, so why get into a fist fight with somebody when I have a pistol? Right. And, and I have the, the legal authority to use it at this point. So, so my decision was use the pistol. So once I make that decision, I know that a stable shooting platform as stable as I can get in that position, a stable shooting platform is the best. I don't want to be moving if I don't have to be. So, um, what I, I, that's when I, that's, so that was my decision. My decision was to, to root the feet, which is why I tried to get a better stable shooting platform and I end up tripping, but, but was to root the feet, pull the pistol and just pull the trigger. And so, um, but the reason why other things didn't happen was because that was the decision that was made. And I committed to that decision. I didn't falter from that decision. So, um, and, and I only changed tactics when the gun came out of my hand and wasn't a part of the fight anymore. So I talk about trying to get the elbow down, all that stuff. That's because I still had the gun. I'm not going to drop the gun so I can get into a fist fight. Like I'm going to try to use the gun. So, um, yeah. So once the gun came out of my hand, then it's like, okay, plan B, which I didn't have. I had to make up on the fly. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, no. I get it, man. Law enforcement contact. What was that like? You got a gun. Uh, Yeah. So I love talking about that because the way the Orlando, so the city I'm from is Orlando in Florida. The way the Orlando police department handled it was hands down, the greatest way it could have ever been handled by any law enforcement officers ever. Um, They pulled up and they don't know me. Obviously I have a shirt on with my company logo on it, but they don't know who I am. They, they, you know, they, I've never seen these officers before in my life. Um, At this point, so 
what what ends up happening once I clear the the parking lot, I go into medical mode. So I've I've I became a paramedic in '97, and I've I've been I've done medical stuff for years. And then in the military, we all get medical training and stuff, even real basic. But I personally advanced my medical knowledge on my own, out of my own pocket, even while I was in the military, so that I could help protect my brothers and sisters. So, um, so I go into medical mode. I holster the pistol once I realize there's not a threat. And then I start giving out commands to some bystanders. And I'm like, you know, cause she's got an arterial bleed. So she's spraying everywhere. So we don't have a tourniquet, but I'm, you know, we're doing makeshift tourniquets. I'm trying to, to stop the bleeding in my wrist, all this other stuff. So um, we're doing that. Somebody is calling 911 just to be sure that the cops are on their way. The cops pull up pistols holstered and covered by my t-shirt. So I have the presence of mind to go. I have a gun on me. They've been told that there was a gun involved, right? They don't know who the shooter was, but they were, you know, they were told that there was a shooting. So they're coming on scene, assuming somebody's got a gun, right? Yeah. So the first officer on scene pops out of his car and he's, he's kind of like looking at everything. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see any guns. Yeah. He's looking at everything. Doesn't see any guns. So he doesn't like draw his pistol or anything. Like he's like, who has the gun? Like, did you get shot? Cause he sees me pouring blood out of my arm. Well, yeah. number one, I got my arm up because I'm trying to slow the bleeding down, but I've got my hands up here. I'm like, I'm like this. I'm like, I have the gun. And he's like, yeah. okay, so you didn't get shot. I'm like, no, I didn't get shot. I shot him, which at this point, I still didn't know I had shot him. That's a whole other part of the story. But um, yeah. I thought I missed with both shots. I was so mad. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, you know, I was the one doing the shooting. I have the gun. He's like, where's the gun? I said, it's appendix carry under my shirt he goes can i can i grab it i was like yeah go ahead i said just be careful there's a round in the chamber and he goes okay cool yeah. he's like just just hang out there i'm like all right cool so he lifts my shirt up he pulls it out he clears it puts it in his car and at no point in time did i feel like i was threatened or or like my like there was gonna or... yeah that, that there was any uncomfortable issues or anything like that like they handled it beautifully um nice yeah. I mean, it, it was, it, like I said, it couldn't have, it couldn't have been handled any better. And we go to the hospital and I'm in the hospital and I'm, I'm so angry. Cause like I said, like, I thought I missed both shots because the strength the guy had, I was like, there's yeah. no way I shot the guy. There's no yeah, way. Down. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I, I'm complaining up and down and we have cops in there with us. Um, you know, cause there was there, we had been shot or there had been a shooting and all this stuff. So they're trying to figure everything out. And I'm just complaining. I'm like, I can't believe I missed them two shots and I couldn't hit them and blah, blah. And finally the, one of the cops comes over to me and goes, Hey, I just want to let you know, you hit him, you hit him in the arm. And I'm like, ah, okay. I feel better. Points <laughs> <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay good man and yeah. so you were given did you give them the like rundown uh right then and there of what happened or did yeah. you the what? what ended up happening was uh they asked me what happened i i recalled pretty much everything i said uh yeah uh they go how many how many times did the gun go off i said there's i got two shots off one went over here one went over there and they're like are you sure i'm like i'm positive like i i know where my bullets go so um <laughs> I just didn't realize that I hit them in the process of them getting there. <laughs> so, um, and, and I said, we, we would tussle around and all that stuff. And, and so they, which was, it was pr general. It was pretty accurate to what the, what the video shows. Um, I just had got some of the, the small details wrong, but, um, but yeah. Uh, but everybody, everybody is, is alive. He's, you know, in jail awaiting trial. Um, and then my coworker that got hit with the machete, she she has blunt force trauma to the neck, so she's having issues with migraines. They're they're trying to work all that out. Um, and then of course the several severed artery, they were able to reattach that, but she still can't move like her thumb on her right hand. So they're yeah, they're yeah. working through all that. Um I got like this L-shaped uh fillet cut. So the machete had like this little hook on the back of it, and that's actually what cut me. It wasn't the front blade, it was the hook. Like when he was doing the sawing motion at some point that hook just flayed open my wrist. Um, but it didn't, it, it didn't catch any tendons. It didn't catch any arteries, any, and it didn't catch anything. It was a bleeder, but it is what it is. Um, 
it wasn't like shooting everywhere. So, um, but yeah, 12 stitches, it was fine. Um, I've got full use of my hand. I have no feeling in like that, you know, this part of my hand, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, it'll probably eventually come back. The, of course, the shoulder dislocation. So I'm still dealing with those issues. Um, small issues with my, with my knee just from rolling around again, mobility problems. Most, most of the knee stuff is most of that. I've just had, I jumping out of airplanes and everything else, you know, bad knees and all that, all that stuff. So, but yeah, it's all part of the plan trying to get all that stuff back online. So, but yeah, no, that's good. Last question. Then I got to pop yeah. smoke, but, um, any combatives training, like, cause we're, we got the protector symposium 4.0 coming up. Um, and we're going to be doing entangled combatives, you know, we're going to be fighting in close spaces, Craig Douglas, all this stuff, human pressure, yeah. full contact, uh, to train for this, because a lot of the stuff, a lot of people have access to is just range centric, range centric training. Yeah. You know, so breaking that up and stuff like that, are there any specific martial arts or training considerations that you are going to look at moving forward or that you think are really valuable as a result of yeah. this? So, um, I'm going to brush up on my, on my, uh, my jujitsu and stuff like that, just because I, I feel like I, I need to brush up on my ground fighting a little bit, but there's a martial art out there. A lot of people haven't heard of it. Um, and I, and I had just started a couple of years ago, kind of learning it. Um, but it's called Naka N A U K A. And, um, it's, it's Serbian. So it Naka is, is Serbian for science. And I actually, Rich and I know the guy whose grandfather created it, like, um, during the, like this, the, all the wars and stuff they were having over in Serbia years ago, like they were trying to find a way. Yeah. They were trying to find a way to fight, um, where they, where they weren't having to like ditch their firearms or their weapons and still be able to, to throw punches and all these different things. So that like the, the gun, the pistol in your hand just becomes an extension of your fist, you know, not. It's not just like, so if you run out of bullets, like you still use that thing to, to jack jaw, jack people and all these different things. Yeah. So, so the way you throw a punch without a gun in your hand is the same way you would throw a punch with the gun in your hand. So like, you know, it's, and it's all a different way of doing this stuff. I tell you, I haven't dedicated the time, invested the time in the, in the martial art to have, have any proficiency with it whatsoever. I just, I just haven't done it. Uh, that's going to change. So, um, out of, I've, I've studied martial arts since I was six years old. I have karate, taekwondo, judo, Muay Thai, like all these different things. None of it. I used in that 30 seconds. I get it guys. I know I'm horrible, but, um, but that's real, that's the reality. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, but I studied all these things over, over the years and hands down all the different things that I've studied. And this isn't just because I know the guy, but, um, but like Naka just, it's the, if I was to try and, and equate it like visually, when you watch people training in Naka, if I was going to try and equate it, it's like Krav Maga. It's just violence of action, man. And it's just these guys, when you watch them, like if you Google it and, and you watch some videos, these guys uh, eat over in Germany, uh, his name's Dellen, the, the grandson and, um, Dellen, they, they train punching tires, not punching bags. Like they, <laughs> they take tires and the guys will hold tires and the dudes just bah, 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 just punching tires, man. No, no gloves on. Like, <laughs> and you'll see them training like in the snow and like, I mean, dude, they're hardcore, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's so. awesome. And I, I, I gotta jump, but this has been amazing. Thanks yeah. so much for spending this time with us, man. Um, you're an awesome, you're a good dude, man. <laughs> you yeah. know, you got hey, after it. Hey, I appreciate, yeah. yeah, I really do appreciate you having me on. I, I love telling my story, not not just to to gloat or anything like that, but just to be able to get the story out there because I feel like telling it if it if it helps one person, that's that's what I need to do. So um and on a personal note, man, I think you're an awesome dude. I've been following you for a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm I'm looking at getting your book. The, the one you were just talking about, especially when you brought up, I was like, that's what it was called. Cause I was trying to remember it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the psychology stuff, man. Like, um, but uh, yeah. And again, on a personal note, reach out anytime, you know, you want to come out and, and, you know, just, just get some triggered time or whatever the case is, reach out anytime, man. We'll, 
we'll we'll link up and uh hey if i can if i can make it down i'll i'll come down and i'll i'll see you guys down there in your in your thing you got going on down there in miami so heck yeah yeah it'd be an honor it'd be an absolute honor yeah i'd love to meet you in person man i really would it it would be an honor thank you you know the honor would be mine too man heck yeah (laughs) we get down there get some training mess around have some good food meet some good people the event's going to be amazing for those of you who don't know we got craig douglas Mike Pannone, Craig Douglas in Tangled Combatives. He's like the man when it comes to that. Mike Pannone, uh, Delta Force, Marine Corps Recon, plank holder for the Air Marshal Program, shooting program. One of the first contractors over there for Triple Camp. He's a living yeah. legend. Uh, we've got Jared Wahungi, inter, uh, Integrated Combatives, teaches all over the world to you know law enforcement agencies, militaries. Huge, huge brand, awesome guy. And then We've also got uh, Tony Sentmanot of Real World Tactical. He's I love that guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a monster. I can't wait to train with him. He's gonna, he's gonna break us off. And then we've yeah. got Lieutenant Colonel Grossman on the psychology behind combat, on combat, on killing. It's gonna be an amazing event. It's coming up October 1st through the 3rd, you guys. So don't miss it. Go to protectorsymposium.com. Join us. We're gonna train with the best of the best. And it's gonna be awesome to share, share space with amazing you know, obviously with your degree and everything, like, like you're big on the psychology stuff. And so it's not, ta- I'm not taking anything away from you, but, but Grossman, holy cow, the wealth of knowledge that man will spit to you. I've, I've watched YouTube videos. I've listened to podcasts. I've read books like this guy, the things that he's done when it comes to PTSD and TBI and just the psychology of war in itself the, is amazing, man. I, I, I love hearing that guy. I really do. Yeah, no, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. So awesome. 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 Um, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you, James. Once again, it's been amazing. I look forward to, we got each other's numbers. We yeah. got to do some stuff. So we're going to get that in, but uh, thank you once again, man. I appreciate you and, and, and uh, keep it up, man. Keep shining that light. We'll yeah, man, you it. too. Like I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, um, anytime, anytime you want to heck man, I was telling you about Rich's, Rich's property out there. There's actually a, a guest cabin on the property. You want to just come out just to get some in the woods time, just to kind of like reset. It's a beautiful place to do that, man. Outstanding. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have to link up. Yeah, man. Awesome. Let me know. All right, bud. Have a good Sounds day. Good. We'll talk soon. All Take right. care. Thanks so much for listening, you guys. Remember until next time, be peaceful, but not harmless. Out. All right, brother. Boom. Yo, what up? I hope you guys really enjoyed that episode. Hey, listen, in order to get more out of the brand, I want to encourage you to go join us on our social media platforms and join us at protectornation.com. We post different types of content on our different platforms at different times. Uh, You'll get blog posts, you'll get videos, you'll get real world combat engagements and things like that. So stay plugged in in order to get the most out of the brand. In order to support us, also go to protectornation.com and buy something or join forces with me on Patreon. You'll scroll down the homepage and you'll see the link. Uh, Anything you can give counts, you know, think about whatever you would lose in your cushions or like spend on McDonald's this month, five bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, That helps, that helps us make the world a better place by making good people dangerous. Anyways, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. And I'll see you on the next piece of content, whether it's a video or podcast, out.